Yo, yo, we back. We're back with another episode. We in person today. You see we live again, man. Live, but we got something special for you. Special, special guests right here. Chef Will, man. Chef Will in the building, man. Come on, y'all. Come hey. on. Let Chef Will today take us, guide us through, you know what I'm saying, the kitchen. He going to give us the ins and outs. And he going to tell us a little bit about like how he became Chef Will. Because honestly, right, a lot of fellas, we need to learn how to Me personally, yeah, man. I need to learn how to cook. Come oh, on. Man. Listen, I already, behind the scenes, we already talked about my one dish. It ain't, it ain't the dish I thought about. Listen, the sauteed chicken. Hey, Alex, <laughs> Alex, you got the sauteed. You got me thinking I sound sweet with the sauteed chicken. It ain't it, right? But look, today we gonna learn something. So before we start, though, Chef Will, can you give us like background or like how you got started and stuff like that? Okay. Well, I started out uh, as a delivery driver around the year 2015. Started out as a delivery driver for this wing place in my hometown, Lava, Connecticut. Started doing uh, delivery driving. And I actually wanted to move up, but I didn't really ask. So he just said, you know what, why don't you start prepping? So I started prepping. Next thing you know, that took me to the next level, started cooking. I just became good. So was you the best wing maker in the joint? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can't say that. I just was efficient and I knew how to float around the kitchen and do sure. different things fast and multi-talented, versatile. You know, okay. in the kitchen, right. managers and chefs, a lot of people that's versatile. Right. Cause they could count on you to do multiple things. You know? right. So that happened. Uh, I ended up leaving that wing spot and transferring to um, a college called Quinnipiac University. Transferred there. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Transferred there. Started out as a line cook. Started serving food. And I just didn't become content. I just started getting better and better. And I told myself, due to me being an athlete, I just was like, I was good. Football, basketball, track, all three. Well, all three. Yeah. Track, yeah. Hey, track. Four, four, <laughs> four, four by one hundred. You know, football got a championship ring and everything. So I decided, you know, I just don't want to be content. I wanted to get better. I wanted to move up to the top, learn. If that's the best chef over there, I want to know how does he cook. Mm -hmm. You know, what does he do in the kitchen? What doesn't he do? So I just wanted to continue to grow, and that took me to, to transfer into Atlanta. Kennesaw State. Yeah. I wanted to leave Connecticut. I either was gonna move to Atlanta or Texas, and Kennesaw State hired me. Went to Kennesaw State, doing the same thing here, growing, learning fast, training people. And one day, I felt like I got undervalued. So once I got undervalued, I went home, decided to create my own meals at home, using my ring light. Making meals on Instagram, adding music. And that's and that's the wave right there too. For sure. Like you see a lot of people get famous off of that. So that's for sure. At first I wasn't really taking it seriously. Mm -hmm. Shout out to my boy Cheese. He was making sure that I was on it consistently promoting, posting, I wasn't doing it. This was kinda not taking it as seriously. And he told me like you need to need to really post some meals. The thing about it is though, a lot of people don't really see the value in what they're doing until you know, you got later on, or right, right, somebody right. else gives you that okay. Turn that up for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please don't burn the broccoli. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Turn, Turn that up. broccoli off. We're going to take that off. Oh, hold on. Let's go. Yo. Oh, right. right. Oh, yeah. What the fuck? I couldn't yeah. see. I couldn't <laughs> see. I couldn't <laughs> see. I couldn't see. <laughs> my bad. But, no, like, what you're saying? No, it's just basically that, you know, you never really see what you can do, you right. know, until, like, somebody, a lot of the times, it takes somebody to see something else in you that you don't see in yourself. Right, right, right. So it's like when you're working hard, or you just casually doing it, it's like, oh, it's a hobby. Right, but right. But then, right. like, I feel you realize, oh, I can actually take this to the next step. Mm -hmm. I can do it for myself, mm -hmm. especially with the resources that are available to us now in society. Correct. You know, social media, you can go ahead. For one, as any dude who cook is going to get some notoriety. Yeah. Because right. you're a male who cook. Yeah, you know the rare 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 ladies love. <laughs> Because that's a rare breed. You hey, can say no you comment, know. no comment. They know. <laughs> they know. <laughs> you see me almost burning broccoli. I definitely don't be <laughs> it at all. So, but no, and I, and I think that's an important thing you said too uh, with your front cheese, right? Right. Backing you up and giving you that support because at times, like how we discussed, like you need that so that that push to mm -hmm. take you to the next level to actually get serious because that's something where. Maybe you ain't see like you you ain't take serious and stuff like that, but that one friend mm -hmm. he can be that spark and that's that can lead right. so much and, and change sure. your whole life perspective for sure, man. So what we uh so what we got this day? Yeah, what, we, what we making today? Okay, today we're gonna make a stuffed salmon. 
Okay, with okay. the kale, sun dried tomatoes, little lemon juice. Okay. With the side of steamed broccoli and cauliflower rice. Okay, that sounds like Don't forget, that. we have a cream sauce that goes on top of it too with, with the wine, white wine. Hey, oh. hey, we doing a little special. <laughs> hey, everybody love their salmon. Y'all about to get the uh, little sauce right here, the little recipe. Hopefully y'all learn something from this thing. So how you like, what's your process like when you when you cooking? Do you start out with the meats? No, hold on. <laughs> uh, or do you start here? You know, you know, guys, put the Or do you, or do you start out with the vegetables and stuff? See, for me, uh, what I learned from a lot of chefs and just for myself, as far as being efficient with time, I try to prep the the thing that's going to take the longest. So, for example, if you're making a stir fry and you have rice, I try to make the rice first. You guys going to take the longest. So while the rice is cooking, I have to do other things. Okay. Right. So in this case. We're going to get the salmon going because the salmon takes about 20, 25 minutes. Plus, we're going to stuff the salmon. Okay. Cauliflower rice is already cut up. Broccoli is already going. And we're going to get it done. Sure. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go ahead. So, um, as you start now, we're just going to be, you know, just jogging your memory, you know. So, what was the first meal that you was like, oh, yeah, I'm like that? Like, <laughs> <laughs> That's oh, funny. Get that one meal. Before I actually was a chef, around the time I was working at the wing place, I decided to make this meal, or the sandwich. My nickname is Jigs, actually, too, so I called it the Jigwich. It was a sandwich that I made at home in my apartment. It was it was sliced chicken, like cold-cut chicken, pepperonis, onions, and I put a rinse sauce on top of it. So, I, so what you would call saute, I saute the onions. <laughs> <laughs> I saute the onions up, put it in the pan, season it well, then I put it in a, a sub, put it in the oven. Some people wanted cheese, some people didn't. Then I put ranch on top of it, and all of my friends wanted it. And then I had a special seasoning for my wedges, so I also made wedges with it. Wedges with the jig, which I had at least about seven of my friends killing it actually for all the time. God, that was my Jesus. first meal. Okay. Jig, you, really said you, had, you said you put a pepperoni, pepperoni yeah, on it? Yeah, I cut the pepperoni up real tiny and I cut the chicken up. You know how you go to certain like uh what is it? Certain restaurants where they got a flat top grill yeah, yeah, and yeah. they like stir fry to make like a uh what you wanna call it, a Philly cheesesteak or a cold yeah, uh, a, a hoagie or something? Yeah, like yeah. hoagie or a, a a chopped chicken. Yeah. yeah, yeah it was yeah, sorta yeah. like that. So I'll put it in a pan, cut it up. You know, it was it was dope, man. See, and that's what I'm saying. You gotta have like, a creative mind to think that, cause me, I think ham, like simple <laughs> hamburger helper, everything the simple stuff, you feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. that one. That like what I would say, what kind of sparks your mind with the creative way to make this for us? Because I know everybody has to be different. Everybody got to find their ways of like what can make me stand out. So what really like what inspires you to stand out? Well, I worked in many different restaurants with different ethnicities. I work with Caucasians. I work with Blacks. I work with Mexicans. I work with Italians. So me having that experience with working with different types of chefs, it was interesting because it's like okay. This guy uses this type of sauce. This guy uses this type of seasoning. He uses this type of, you know, wine in his pasta, and they don't use wine over there. So I have like a, a well-rounded, you know, uh, aesthetic as far as you know, creating different meals. I learned something from everybody. Right. Even right. my aunt in the south, my uncle up north, my cousin in the west. I just learned something from everybody and put it all together into my own creative, you know, creative taste. What uh what started that though? Because it seems, you know, you pretty it seems like you're pretty humble. Like, you know, every situation you go into, you go in and as a learner. You just try to learn and see, you know, what you can take away from the situations. But a lot of the times cooking to me, um, is a not a territorial thing, but people who know how to cook know they know how to cook. And at times it's hard for them to really take advice because they've been cooking a certain way so long. So how do you differentiate that? Well, that's the thing. I didn't always know how to cook. <laughs> I just knew how to season, right? Mm -hmm. Season is half the battle. If you know how to season, you're great. The food. I, I know how to season too. Okay, that's one thing I know how to do. Yeah, I do know how to season. Take this broccoli up one second. Yeah, I can. I can for sure season it. Just everything, the steps after. No, can. I can season food. I was about to say, I'll tell you, you take my chicken. No, 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 no. <laughs> I said the, the, the complex trying to build it up, seasoning. Okay. That that chicken. You taste the chicken. 
You ain't that. Uh, you got. You got. You got. Show me something. Now listen, y'all might get an episode where y'all see the way I chef it up. Oh, like yeah, it, it, it ain't. It ain't gonna be special. You, you be having size. Oh, of course, I got size. Size. What size. What size you? What size, size. size you have? You know, sometimes I get the I get the broccoli, the asparagus. You know, you get the. The you know I sauteed this. Oh, you saw okay, uh, okay. okay. Yeah. Back back to what you said. What was the question? Um, basically, you know, how do you go into the? Well, you talk about how well, basically you ain't know how to cook. So correct. But basically, how did how did you take this attitude as a learner? Because I feel like that is what um part of the reason why you know you've seen some of the you know success that you've seen so far because you go into situations like look, I'm willing to learn. You know what I mean? I'm trying to take something away from him and him and him. Right. So well, where did that stem from? Well, before cooking, I come from humble beginnings, you know. Shout out to my parents, I'm thankful for them. They're very humble. They always taught me to, you know, not be so full of yourself, always keep your ear open. I'm Willie the third, I actually have a father and grandfather who, you know, I had to listen to growing up. So that started just always being willing to listen. You know, I mean you don't know everything. It could be from a janitor to a homeless person, it doesn't matter. Right. You should always have an open ear. So I always decide to listen and if I'm willing to grow, I have to learn. I'm not gonna know everything. Sure. And outside of cooking, I just like to listen. You know, I want to know something that I didn't know before. So I apply that same type of uh, mentality to cooking. Okay. Like I want to learn something because I know I'm not okay with being just a line cook making thirteen dollars an hour. But right. when I make twenty, I gotta learn and listen. So, see, and I think that's what a lot of people don't understand. Like, and that's just in life general. If you're trying to get to a certain place in life, you got to be able to listen. You right. can't always try to be the loudest voice in the room, you know, especially right. if it's peers, it's in, at the, the level that you're trying to reach, you just got to listen. Everybody just want to be the mentor. Everybody want to be the head honcho. <laughs> but you got to you gotta crawl before you even walk, before Correct. you even run, you feel me? So that's a thousand. So what's, what's this right here we talking about? So right, right now, we're having beats. No, this is sun dried <laughs> sun dry tomatoes. Sun oh, sun dried tomatoes. Tomato. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I ain't know what them were. So this is the stuffing for the uh, for the the salmon. Okay, we got the stuffing right here. So I have sun dried tomatoes in here, mixed with kale. Next, I'm going to add some garlic, clam oh, juice. I had garlic. Clam juice, garlic, then some seasoning. Clam juice. Oh, so that's, 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 that's a secret ingredient. Right oh there. man, I didn't even think I heard the clam juice. <laughs> <laughs> no funny, of <laughs> I don't think I really never well, heard so of the season. Since you've been using them, okay? Since you, since you oh, maybe the season. season, okay, okay. Yeah. My, my go-to is a lemon pepper, okay. a garlic powder. Basic black. No, no, lemon pepper, garlic powder. And I do like a little, um, you know, a little cayenne. Uh, you know, okay. I like my food a little spicy. I feel like you can't cayenne. use too much of that cayenne. You gotta be careful with that. Was that bad? High blood pressure? Yeah, it's just spicy. It's hot. <laughs> oh no, I mean I don't mind. I don't mind. Uh, See, listen, a few a few pinches will help. Okay. How much? You put more than that in there? Uh, a decent amount. Taking the flavor away. Wow, he's, he's I different. like the spice. Different, different breeds. Different breeds. I'm taking all the flavor. Be careful with that cayenne. Even I know that. <laughs> See, he need a whole bucket of water when he that. <laughs> okay, now I do use my garlic, and now one thing I do. It's like with all of the majority, like even with like the vegetables and stuff, yeah. always saute the garlic. You know what I mean? For sure. For you know sure. what I mean? A little bit sure. of garlic, stir it around a little bit, you know, a little bit of lemon. See, me and him, we, we kind of on the same type of stuff. Lemon you juice. Know? He, he do what I fresh, do. Fresh lemon juice. Oh, fresh lemon juice. There you go. For the Look, the your tools, no okay? Ball, no store ball lemon juice fresh. Shout out to the bartenders, they use this as well. Okay. There you go. All right, boom. So we got the lemon juice in there, we got the garlic, we got the. Sun dried tomatoes, sun dried tomatoes. Yep. And that's kale, right? Yes. Yep, you gotta get up. I'm gonna add a juice for the clam juice, clam juice, secret ingredient. Secret ingredient, man. We putting y'all on. Make sure y'all. I don't even know what clam juice really do, but we gonna see. Do two tablespoons. Okay, okay, okay. Not too much yet. Now, I know that you told me about um, some of the people who you've been able to cook for. Right. So, how did you transition from the line cook? So like, okay, I want to start doing private uh, sessions with some of the people who I'm interested, you know, who I would like to cook for. Okay. Well, it started during COVID. I did meal prep for a lot of people based off of my Instagram post. Mm -hmm. Did meal prep. I did a meal prep special that was $10 a person, $100 a person, I'm sorry, $10 a container. That basically took off. It was a lot, man. It was, I was doing at least 
hundreds and hundreds of fifty meals on myself Good. every every Sunday. For real? Hundred and fifty? Seriously. Hundred to hundred and fifty. hundred and hundred God, every Sunday though. That's a working right there. <laughs> 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 like, sure, I'm sure the was done by the end yeah, of the- Yeah, my wife was like, what's going on here? I said, listen, it's the process, just, just give me a little bit. But once I started doing meal prep, you know, people was asking, are you able to cater? Are you able to do this? And can you do this? And sometimes, you know, I didn't know how to cook something or I didn't really know everything, but I took the chance and I said, you know what? I trust myself, I have confidence. I'm gonna go out there and try it and I succeed every time. Wow, so you went into certain situations when you didn't know how to make certain things? Uh, not too many, but a few. I wasn't, you know, A1 with it, I would say. I was, you know, decent. Right. And I always practiced before I actually got to the game. Right. <laughs> so before I actually got to the point where I needed to cook for them, I practiced my meals. Okay. So I didn't go in there blindfolded, but, you know, I just, that's, that's the way I got good, man. I just threw myself in the fire, honestly. See, I ain't gonna lie to 150 every Sunday. That's, yeah. that, that's, that's hard work right there. A lot of people don't, they don't see that. Like, on, they see people on Instagram mm -hmm. getting all, like, getting famous from the food and stuff. You just see, like, the final product, but you don't understand the work that goes about it. For sure. And when people have businesses, and, and even when people get mad, if maybe you, like, a little bit late on delivery or, like, Maybe the food, uh, maybe just a little bit worse. Like, no, I definitely <laughs> But it just it'll give you a better, better appreciation. Somebody go 150, 100 to 150 by yourself. On a Prepping something. the meals, making custom meals, cooking. I was doing a lot of the dishwashing up until I was like, you know what? I got to pay somebody even though it was in my house. Started paying somebody to do it. And I was delivering sometimes because I didn't have a reliable dishwash uh, driver. Yeah, I was doing it all, man. So how was the delivering method? Because I know that must have been a headache already. Honestly, it was, it was a lot, man. I was burnt out, honestly. It just got to a point where it's like, either I have to take less people or I have to find a delivery job because there's so many phases to meal prep. Right. So it's like, I have to cut out one of those, man. I decided to just lower my number of meal preps, you know, because mm -hmm. I can't continue just to take money and take so many people and do it by myself. Unless I get a team, right. which I have a few people that can help, but I don't have a solid, deep roster. I don't have that yet. So, what, and then, like, how you come about, like, just finding people for that roster? Or, like, is it, like, is it good friends? You think so? Is it people you met along the way? Honestly, it depends to a certain extent. Um, no offense to anybody's friends or my friends. I don't want friends that really don't want to do it, even though, you know, you might be able to help me. But I want you to, to actually want to do it because I take this seriously. This is my brand, this is my LLC, this is my name. This gives me a lot of doors, so I want you to take it seriously as well, not just do it just because, you know, I'm here to help, but I just want you to do it as well too. That's interesting though, because a lot of the times people require, um, you know, their friend's support. And, you know, sometimes when a friend that might not, just literally might not be interested in what you're doing, like, Y'all probably, you know, get to arguing or things don't necessarily go that way. <laughs> sure. but I think it's all right, man. If you don't want to do it, like, I don't think you should be like, oh, you need to be supportive just because you're my man. If this is not right. something that, like, you want to invest your time in. Sure. Sure. I mean, I look at it like you can find a role for a certain friend. Right. Know, they might not have to cook, but he can deliver the job or he can, you know, make phone calls for me, be my consultant. So, it's different things. So, so we ready to put this in the oven? Yeah, we'll put it in the salmon in the oven. We have two stuffed salmon here. Yes, sir. Going right in the oven for 20 minutes. The temperature that we need is 140 for the salmon. For real? 140. Damn. I thought, I ain't gonna lie, between my salmon on 350. Well, the temperature for the oven is 350. The internal temperature for the fish to be done is 140. Anything after 140 is gonna start tasting like gum. You don't want that chewy taste. You ever had salmon that's hard to chew? Yeah. That's because they cooked it. They overcooked it. Dang. And it's not soft. It's just extra brittle and chewy. Okay. 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 We put you on the game right there. Yeah, I didn't know that. <laughs> you know what I mean? You tell me you eat the chewy time. I don't think you eat the chewy time. I definitely had the chewy time. I don't know why you were like to eat blood. Sure. Nah, I don't know. I don't like no blood in the like, <laughs> I like the pink. I like the pinkness of it. Though. I don't like it like too the too much. To like each his own. Oh, the meat. Yeah, I know people, that, yeah, I know people that eat it on <laughs> medium rare. Me, yeah. See, I I mean, if you bite. eat it well done, you not you not enjoying the flavor. It's not a well done. Not that bad though. Right. It's a bird. 
It's not. If you know, it's, it's you, know you can make it work, bro. I'd rather be. I'd rather be no blood than blood. Bro, at that point, you eating cookout food. Like, <laughs> I'd rather eat no blood than blood, though. Like you eating blood, you eating meat and bread. I, if I spent a big money on expensive steak and that thing is cooked like. To a point where it's grilled or something, something like that. I well done know. shouldn't be grilled though. I, you don't really taste the flavor. I, try, try medium. Try medium one time. No, I would never eat medium. Medium well. Medium well. Medium well. I eat medium well. Medium one time. So you eat medium. I eat medium, medium well. No, you don't. I'm trying to say you eat medium well. I'm not trying You do not eat medium well. I can see if I switch it out to medium realm. I stuck in a medium, medium well. You don't eat medium well, boo. I was thinking right. that man right there. Bro. So we got the green onions right there. Yeah, that's gonna, yeah. that's gonna go into the cauliflower rice. Okay. Got you. All right. I'm gonna chop those up real, real tight. Real Y'all wanna tight. know something? I've been cutting the green onions the wrong way this whole time. I thought you cut that in. No, this thing you don't want. That's the hard one. No way you put that in your food. Really? I stop. I've been putting. Yeah, that in crunchy hard. bite, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I told you, it sounds would be real gummy. <laughs> yeah, like, hey, stop, for real. I ain't gonna lie. I'm old because I, I cut, first I cut the uh, the back part off like with all the, the heads. And I'm like, right, I'm gonna cut the heads off. And then I'll be using that part. Nah, your, your sound like chili, like some have a bubble, man. Well, <laughs> now I'm like green onions, use this, the end part. The Damn. green, not the white. Stay with the white. You cut that off, honestly. So what that before? Wow. That looks like this. There's no way like no, I don't even cut I don't even cut that, but there's no way you, you, you now I'm this. <laughs> so that's all like, oh, that might have been one of the reasons why you call me the Viking. <laughs> you you just put it. Okay, okay. <laughs> that even makes more sense because it's green onions. I don't know why I wanted the white pot, but hey, that's what I'm here for, you know what I mean? I know I ain't the only nigga who thought that. So what's your what's your favorite season that you use so far? Jeez. I can't tell him. I can't tell him. Uh, no, I'm joking. I'm trying to tell him. Um, well, depends for what I'm cooking. Well, it depends what I'm cooking. What you what you put in everything? That one thing. That one thing you put in everything. It has to be one thing. Oh, it can be multiple. Well, you mean multiple? multiple. Has to have a blend. So I would say salt, sea salt. I don't use any other type of salt. Well, I actually use. Pink Is it a significance? Too. Between sea salt versus the regular? For sure. Kosher breaks down the mucus. You don't really want any mucus in your body. Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. Kosher has a lot of iodine, too. Keep it right there. Yeah, you don't really want to have too many foods in your house that have mucus. Sea salt. Not too, much, salt. Not too many mucus forming foods. Salt, uh, kosher salt, that is, has a lot of mucus and iodine. Okay. Uh, sea salt, garlic, granulated garlic. Now the difference between granulated and garlic powder, granulated garlic is more like a sand form. It's not like a powder. The garlic powder is more like a powder. Mm -hmm. I just like granulated because it, it's a different texture. Mm -hmm. it, it, you don't have to use as much as you would for garlic powder. Okay. Onion powder and black pepper. Those four, I would say, goes in mostly everything. Then I might add in paprika, Italian season, you know, etc. Mine, mine is uh, lemon pepper. <laughs> lemon pepper, okay. okay. Cayenne. Okay, okay. Gotta go with the onion powder. I fuck with the onion powder. Yeah, yeah. And the garlic powder, yeah, like the garlic powder. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm more of a salt, you know, the garlic, the <laughs> onion, you know, I got it. Garlic and onion go hand in hand. Yeah. Like, you can't, you can't. <laughs> I said that, that you it, 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 it put a nice little pizzazz to it, you feel me? And then it's that, that, dang, it's that little all season, the little, I don't be making The all chicken. purpose one? The little, yeah. Adobo? Uh, I know uh, what you're talking about. Adobo? Adobo? Yeah, adobo. Yeah, adobo. yeah, adobo. yeah. Adobo. yeah mm -hmm. I, be, I be having, I be abusing that thing on my chicken, I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. That's a one, that's a wonder, uh, a wonder for me right there. Yeah, that's, that's a great sauce. Honestly, it's a tough great season. So, like, uh, what's, what's some, like, I would say, your best experience so far catering for someone? Wow, that's experience. That's tough. I had a lot of great experiences cooking, especially when they eat the food and they're satisfied. That's the experience itself, for sure. That's a tough question. I would say New Year's. Last New Year's was it 2022? 21. Yeah, we're 22, so. This, right. well, the, this, this, the recent New Year. Oh, the one that just passed. Yeah, okay, 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 okay. All right. To me, in my head, is the last one. I believe that's the the best experience. I doubt it, though. You know what? No. 
Incorrect. Uh, single de Mayo, 2021. Oh, 2020. Okay. 2020. Um, it was with my, my best friend here, David, who passed. So it was so fun because I got booked for a catering to make tacos and et cetera for single de Mayo. And it was about, he said, he said about 50 people. I could do that by myself, but I was tired from a previous caterer. So I called my friend David, my partner in crime. Me and him was like Stephen Clay. Shout out to my, my splash brother in heaven. So I brought him and I guess I was on the phone talking about the catering to some guy named Thrax. Shout out to Thrax. He's like, I want to say the number one promoter in, in Atlanta. He manages, uh, what's his name? Man, just the guy that's saying dope, baby. Uh, the, uh, bro. We, we know, we, 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 we are cash. Shout out yeah, to Thrax. Thrax hired me for the event, and Rico, who's on tour a lot of, they basically uh, hired me. And I was on the phone with Thrax, and David heard it. He was like, wow, you know Thrax? You don't even know who that is. I said, honestly, I'm just doing my job and helping mm -hmm. and cooking. He was like, wow, I know all of them. I said, bro, he's like, damn, why you didn't tell me? I would've came prepared, I would've been dripped out. I said, I didn't know you knew him. I said, I didn't know you knew him. So we got there, and I believed him, but I really believed him we got there. Everybody was like, oh, David, you know him? Hey, brother. So fast forward, everybody knew him. We was cooking tacos. Man, after we was done, we was taking shots. It was like a, it was like a celebration, man. Right. That was the last big catering me and him did before he passed in August. But that was the best experience, honestly. They all loved the food. It was like family. We stayed to 3 in the morning. We networked. I just did it with my partner in crime, and it was dope, man. Really, it was dope. That's for love, man. I rest in peace. Yeah, rest in, rest in peace to your best friend, man. And I know, like, even having the opportunity to experience that and, and doing your craft that you love, and just having that exposure right there with one of the best people in the land right there, I know that's probably, like, a big relief and, and, and great feeling. For sure. For sure. So that, uh, going, going, the right, going in the right path, you know? Right. And it, do you ever get like nervous? Because a lot of like a lot of people just get there on their first day or just going to like that big person or, or cooking for the the big crowd. Do you ever get nervous before you going in there preparing your dishes and things? For sure, uh, I definitely used to get nervous. Not as much now, you know. Because first of all, I'm a people's person, so yeah. I make myself comfortable with talking to people and making them enjoy my presence. I used to get nervous just because I don't. Know, I can't explain it. This is a nervous. Nervous feeling. Yeah, I mean, I ain't gonna lie, food is a subjective thing. Like, <laughs> yeah. everybody not gonna yeah. like your food. Like, right. I know I'm a critic. I ain't gonna lie. Like, if something ain't really here, you know, like, eh, you know what I mean? Right, right, right. Like, I don't like everybody's food. Like, you know, you might like this person potato salad, but when they make it, it ain't <laughs> the same, you yeah. know? And then the thing is, you gotta know where you're going there to get the food, too. Or yeah. What type of chef you dealing with. Like, if I'm going to, like, a uh, uh, like a black chef or whatnot, I know the season is gonna be it's gonna sure, be, yeah, it's yeah, gonna be there all the time. If it's another chef, I ain't gonna say it, like it ain't no season on stuff, but <laughs> I ain't, but you know, I ain't expecting it either. Right. You feel me? So if I am let down, I know what I expect. The time do, you, do you have this theory too? Because I always had this theory, like, yeah, it. Say if I get no fun, I'm not, and I know these people gonna say I'm wild. But if a Chinese person mm -hmm. or in a Mexican restaurant, I ain't eating the, the Mexican food. <laughs> you know, I don't know, bro. I, that's a great point. But I, I, I've been to places where people don't belong in that type of like thing where I got stereotypically wise, and they food be busting more better than you know what I'm saying. Like the carry out, the carry out is gonna test of that for real, but it's really they food, like they frying chicken wings, so it's really not taking them out their element. Do you mean that a uh, different ethnicity is cooking the food or a different ethnicity is owning it? Owning it. Well, for example, if Asian owns a Mexican place, if the Mexican is cooking it, it really don't. Well, yeah, yeah, wait, 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 wait then, well, yeah. You talking about Asian chefs? Yeah, the like Asian chefs. Like, say if you go to a Mexican restaurant and it's all Asian chefs. You eating, you eating the Mexican? Well, I learned that to a certain extent, it really doesn't matter because a lot of people are talented. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Some, it might be a Mexican, that, this is a, a, a stretch, but this is an example. It might be a Mexican that can cook soul food better than somebody. For sure. There's a lot of talented chefs in the world, but like you said, I get the concept. Yeah, I'm about to say, y'all eating soul food? I'm going to give it a try, but just like I said, with well, my, like, my my whole little like perception of it, like I'm not gonna set my standards too high on this food because I'm not gonna be let down. 
Okay. Like if you not in that culture, it's like, all right, I'm gonna give it a try because it might y'all look like y'all got it set up. Cause a lot of people they fool you. They had a presentation good, <laughs> and then once you eat the food, it's absolutely terrible. Cause on some real stuff, we used to have this spot we used to go to called Hawaiian Barbecue. Hawaiian Barbecue was torch, right? But the people in the Hawaiian Barbecue looked Filipino. They like look, like you know what I mean. Like they looked. Like they made the Hawaiian yeah. barbecue. And what was on the menu? It was like, who we used to get the fish, the rice. Man, that shit was pork. The, oh, yeah, man. Yeah, fish, rice, all kinds of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> the chicken, all of that Bread. stuff. It was tourist stuff. But the one we went to here had Americans. Okay. That was the worst Hawaiian barbecue I had. I'm, you know what I mean? I can see what you're saying. Like, if they don't, if they not from that culture, they not going. They not going to understand the type of like traditions that they got in there. Right. All right. So they going to mess it up. That's, so, yeah. all, that's all. I'm you saying. know, you you definitely going to mess that up. That's what I gotta say. Oh, my my life. I agree with you. I still a possibility. <laughs> yeah. That is that is because it's talented people everywhere. So it might be one person who might specialize in all kind of stuff. But like, I'm gonna be honest. Like Gordon Ramsay. I don't think Gordon Ramsay can make soul food like uh, uh, oh. Aunt Jemima. You know what I mean? Or you know what I mean? Like. Or grandma, yeah, you know sure. what I mean. He ain't gonna make it sound like grandma. He not. Yeah, cause like, or like anybody in that community, cause you, that's what you just born, you taught to, and to learn how to make that. You know what I'm saying? You make it so all, so you might got a point right there. Uh, right there. So, we, so, so we got salmon. whipping cream. So the, while, the, while the salmon is cooking, I have the sauce that I'm making for the salmon. It's a wine sauce. Well, I did not add the wine, so mm -hmm. let's do that. Uh, uh, so, wine, that I really wanted to ask you with, what like, you how do you wine pick? is when you make it, so is that what you make shrimp scampi with? No, I mean, yes, I, sir, look, look at him. him. He oh, I know a little uh, something, uh, I know a little something now. So how do you pick which wine to use and stuff like that? Well, first of all, you got to taste them, and you have to try different wines with different foods. Like, sherry wine might be for a certain pasta. White wine goes in a lot, though, so it depends on, honestly, I learned cooking. I learned what goes with what from reading a book called Flavor Bottle. Well, besides that, I had to try everything. I had to test it out. I had to get creative. So I know what goes in certain wines and pastas. You can study or you can act or you can just try yourself, honestly. For sure. The best way for you to learn is messing up. I tell people this all the time. Like, how did you really get good? Half of my answer is me messing up. Yeah. Now, it took me a, a long time to make white rice. I couldn't make white rice for the longest time. For some reason, I don't know how I overcooked it. Sometimes I throw it out every other day. I'm like, this is tough, but you gotta mess up. That's the best way. For sure. And, that, and I think that's like important. Cause everybody, once you mess up, you just be like, you know what, I'm done with it. You know? that's, <laughs> like, that's literally our whole mindset. Like in this generation, like I mess up three, like two, three times. You know what, this ain't for me, let me go on. But you roll out stuff with it. Cause I, me personally, I ain't got the patience for the cooking stuff. <laughs> so like once I mess up the right twice, I was like, you know what, we good. Oh my tuck it out and eat. You gotta get you a partner that can learn with you. Yep, that, that, that is true. That's what I love Pedro all the time. I ain't gonna lie. Even with the wine, the wine tasting though, just like you said, though, tasting it, it's really like, you gotta take your time with that too, because it's a different type of wines. Like I went to a wine tasting, and it's the different textures, the different type of like stuff you can really eat it with, compatible yeah. with, and okay. stuff. So it's like, a, I, I say, you drink it, you gonna be drinking for a little minute right there. So now we, we about to work on the cauliflower rice. So yes, we're gonna work on the cauliflower rice next. I'm just tasting this cream, making sure it tastes the way it need to be. Oh yeah, that's 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 nuts. <laughs> well, I want to give y'all a taste um, before it actually gets reduced. He got that. Who, who wants to taste it? Go ahead, guys. I know you probably gonna eat dairy. Okay. It's not all the way does reduce. Honest opinion. You know, I'm not. Nah, this is it, man. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> no, 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 I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie. We, we want the truth. Nothing but the truth. I got no reason to lie. That's the sauce. So what I'm making now for the sauce is a slurry. It's uh, cornstarch and water. It helps thicken up the sauce. Any sauce you want. There's different ways or different kinds. I'm sorry for you to thicken up a sauce, arrowroot powder, many different ways. Oh, that's what I was going to say. I ain't going to lie to you. It is that. It is that. Appreciate you, brother. So I'm going to let that reduce and cook down, thicken up. Does it oh. matter how high how, how you got the fire? For sure, definitely. Depends on what you're cooking, too. A lot of times, when you want to get something to a boil, mm -hmm. you obviously turn it up high quick. And mm -hmm. then once you get whatever you need to get in there, you turn it low. Okay. But for the most part, 
if you're not in a rush, you don't need to cook it hot. And honestly, if you are in a rush, cooking it hot wouldn't help you because it's just gonna burn it. Especially if you make the sauce say, I didn't put cheese in that sauce, mm -hmm. but I did it and I turned it high, the cheese gonna melt the bottom and you have to turn it low so you can stir it. Yeah, you gotta know what to turn it low and turn high. But I suggest cooking at a medium level or a low level, I don't turn it high too much. Okay. That's my issue. That's what everything I'm trying to get it done to know. Oh, man, that's not how you do it. I know. That's why my stuff be burnt. I ain't going to I got to ask you this, though, Will. So you told me that, you know, you did a private one, a uh, private um, cooking for my man, being mm -hmm. on blasting him. Shout out to Cali Boys. Fuck with them. How was that, man? Like, how was that uh, doing or cooking for somebody who you listen to? Right. I, well, I actually didn't get a chance. I was supposed to. I was getting close to it. Oh, okay, okay, and okay. And they was busy. I would love to cook for uh, being on blast. I was close to it, and I didn't get it. But having an opportunity, like, even how does that even feel, just having a chance to even be close to that? Because a lot of people, they're not even, like, in the talks or, or, or in the realms of those type of people. So how does it even feel to get that chance? Well, I feel like now, for you to show your talent, you have to take a shot, take a chance. Mm -hmm. You might have to, you know, DM somebody, give somebody a free shirt, give somebody a free meal like I did earlier today. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good feeling. You have to be able to take that chance and not be scared. Because if you're scared, nobody's never going to know that you're good at something you do, unless you just stand on the corner and show everybody. But for the most part, certain people like celebrities, you got to take that chance. I know it may be hard that you might not get that opportunity to cook or they might not book you, but you never know until you try, you know? For sure. Who have you been able to do then so far? Cook for people? Mm -hmm. uh, I cook for a um, lot of old manager, DJ Vaughn. Cook for a lot of business owners in in Atlanta. Cook for 19 Keys. You got oh, to wear that. 19, 19 yeah, Keys, that's my, that's my big brother, man. 19 Keys, Bashir who bees with him. The other guy that's with him. Yeah. Billionaire in PA few others, but a lot of business owners, I can't think of any, oh yeah, me and my friend David, we cook for DeAndre Swift. Oh, D Swift, that's nice, that's yeah, nice. Yeah, we cook for DeAndre Swift. So how is it like preparing for like an athlete, because I know it's a little different thing, so how, how exactly is that? Preparing for athletes? Yeah. Well, knowing what they eat is important due to them, you know, being on the plan. Mm -hmm. Also, making sure nobody has allergies. That's the number one. None of you got some allergies, right? No, I got it. You, you, you know mine. That's it, never see you. <laughs> you know yeah. we have to, yeah, we have to make sure nobody has allergies. Make sure it's with their plan. Making sure they're getting the right calories. That's important. Making sure they get the right calories. Like I said, making sure they don't have any allergies. Make sure the food tastes good. That's right. Right. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so I know, like, with, with meal prepping with them, usually, like, they be having all their chefs be cooking all different types of stuff. Like, I had a chance to go to uh, Bass and Boxes. I was shout out to my man Kareem. I, I was there and I was seeing, like, the chef prepare some stuff, but she had, like, all these different types of dishes and, like, yeah, boy, meals. Oh, my bad. Oh, yeah, for sure. It is. But had different types of meals and stuff, so I know how, like, extreme it can get. Right, right, so, right. Do, is there ever a time where you kind of got discouraged along your path? Feel like you've seen other chefs being shine and like, like, dang, why? I'm, I cook better than them. my stuff. My stuff, I know for sure my stuff tastes better. Why can't I get that same like opportunity? Well, I try not to think like that, but let's be real here. Sometimes I do. Well, I used to. Not anymore. I still wonder like, you know, why am I not getting this opportunity, or whatever? And I told myself, you know, God is going to bless you, and He's going to bless you. You know, you can't force things. And I'm also not a person that chase people. I don't want to chase opportunities. I want it to come naturally. So I stopped comparing myself. You know, a lot of us, no matter what we say, we automatically compare ourselves to others, especially through the social media. It's just a mental thing. So I basically don't try to compare myself. Um, but I don't, I don't even think about other people no more, what they're doing. I just think about my lane. It takes time for sure. It didn't come overnight. I just told myself I can do what they do. But our journeys are different, you know. Mm -hmm. They might be going through something different. We might be doing something. They might have a, a hand. I might have had a hand. I might have not had a hand. Everybody's life different. So I don't really think about it like that no more. I know I make my own connections and I have my own people. 
and they put my name in different rooms, so I'm okay with that. I'm happy with that. See, I want to say I personally had to adopt that kind of lifestyle as well, because like I'll be on the ground and I'll be seeing people doing stuff, and I'll be like, dang, like why couldn't I be having that opportunity? Why aren't I at that place and stuff? But I'm just like. I had to separate myself. That's why sometimes I do like a, like a cleanse on social media. Right. Like understanding right. like my path that I'm going, God just got me in this path for a reason. Correct. My journey is, a, is for me to learn this certain type of process. If I jump and go to that point, I might have not learned or, or been what I'm going, but that person had probably learned their journey, what they probably missing out and stuff like that. So I had to understand that everything. They come and take their time with this stuff. So I think that's a, that's a great thing to do. I think that's easier said than done. I know a lot of times, though, like he was saying, like, oh, yeah. we all can acknowledge the fact that we want to be at a certain place in our lives. Like, we not, and if we're not necessarily there, For sure. you're going to start to look and say, like, damn, like, well, I, I see somebody who's, you know, within the same lane as me, you know, doing exactly what I'm doing, and they there. And right. you have an expectation for yourself. So it's just, like he said, it's natural to compare. Yeah, for I sure. just think you just can't let it consume you though. Like it's like, I ain't, I ain't gonna lie. If 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 this is for him, I really believe that. Like that's for him. Like this is his path. Like, Correct. I believe that. Like whatever is intended or whatever happens in his life or whatever obstacles that he faced or she faced, those are their obstacles. That's and they're like the ones that we have are our own. And we all have to find a way to balance. Like. How can we overcome them our own way? And and then you know I like I had to learn that and then like another perspective to the fact that like um that even when they go through the stuff like that, use that as motivation. If mm -hmm. they at that point they're at that level, I'm gonna use that as motivation to, to push me, like, oh you know what, this person is there. Not I I can't bash and be like, oh, they don't deserve that or what did they do to deserve that? No, nah, that's not what's important. It's pushing myself all right, I see what's, what's possible. Let me go ahead and exceed that level and stuff like that. So I think it's all again your perspective. And that could go to the uh, chef and more being the chef as well. Like you see all these people with these like dishes and things, it's just like, what can I do to step up? What right. can I do to make a difference? Thanks. Right. And I think, like he said, the one thing I think uh, that he does well is practice for the game. You know what I mean? Like sure. practice the meals that you want to make. If it's something that you feel, or anything you're doing, if it's something that you feel that you lack in, or something that you feel that you might necessarily need more work in, just take the time out. You know, especially if it's something that you are passionate about, putting the time in, putting the energy in, don't feel like work when you love what you're doing. For real. And it seems like, you know, with people who are chefs or us doing podcasts, anybody doing whatever they're doing, like if you genuinely care about what you're doing, it's just gonna feel like second nature at the end of the day. And that, that reminds me of what sounded like Gilbert Arena said. He was like, a lot of breakout, a lot of players in the NBA, they be want to break out seasons, but they don't practice. So they don't have like that same mentality they want to have in the game at practice, where you see Kobe, you see all the greats going crazy at practice. They treat it like it's a game every practice. So once they get in the game, that's a habit for them. Like, all right, if you see a person not passing a ball or something like that, it's not like they're not doing it in practice. So when you get in the game, you know what to expect. I'm going to get my shot. I'm going to go crazy, right? But then it's just like that with chef. We're, we're cooking as well. I'm going to keep prepping. I'm going to keep preparing these meals and stuff. So by the time when I get that opportunity to shine, I'm ready. I don't have to worry. I don't have to, like, be scared of anything. But if you over here cooking, like, the, the many meals and then you get that big dish, you of course you're going to be shook. You ain't going to know what to do. So you're going to have full, you might have full execution. Right away. So right. if you get an opportunity and you're not ready for it, and you, you're upset that you didn't get an opportunity, then that's, that's, you gotta look yourself in the mirror. For sure. What's the grand scheme of things for you? Like, what's the overall vision? Like, obviously, I know you've been doing um, private dinners and stuff, but like, what's what's the big vision for you? Well, the sky's the limit, honestly. If somebody tell me they wanna open a restaurant in Buckhead Village, I'm gonna go with it. So, right. the sky's the limit. There's so many things I wanna do. There's so many things you can do in the chef brand. But, for a grand scheme, I really want to teach, you know, because a lot of people really don't know how to cook at home, and a lot of us are in financial trouble. So if we learn how to shop and cook and meal prep for ourselves, we cut that price in half that we spend on eating out. You know what I'm saying? So it's like teaching, teaching, not just posting a meal on Instagram and saying look and bragging about it. It's deeper than that. It's about teaching. Obviously, I want to get some type of product in stores, mm -hmm. sauces, seasons. And like I said, teach. 
I have a big plan coming up, which I don't want to talk about yet. Okay, uh, stay tuned. Got <laughs> some new stool. He got some new stool. Y'all, that salmon smell good as nah, shit. it really, it really definitely do smell real good. <laughs> like I'm, I'm, that's why I keep looking back. I'm like, God, it, it definitely smell like one. We get in there. We're almost there. And, uh, so, and then I was gonna say, um, hey, uh. I forgot about going. I was about to say, I mean, I, I just love the fact that he said he want to teach. I think uh, as a community, we don't do that for that one is, another. That's what I was about to say. That like, is. him when the, I, I was thinking, it's crazy though. I, I was having an idea, you know, I wanted to do it, like I was telling you with um, a friend of ours, to have a healthy, not a healthy cooking show, but a cooking segment so you can know where to get stuff. Because the main thing is, like, as a man, we don't really know how to shop yeah, for groceries. Yeah, we don't. Like, if, if you a single man, man, me and you had that discussion like the <laughs> other day. Like, when you have like a girl, or whatever, they'll do and they do the shopping. They they would fulfill the whole house. They make sure it's all good. Like, man, as a man, we just we just do the bare minimum because yeah. really that's all we just train to do at times to just do the bare minimum. Like we be all right. So like that having that that's a good idea. And yeah. I, I was just gonna piggyback, like you, you help remind me, like what I was thinking about, is that on Instagram you don't see a lot of people teach you. Oh, like you don't see a lot of people that actually tell you how to cook. They'll show you the product, they'll show you some of the stuff, but they ain't tell you how much they're using. They ain't tell you mm -hmm. what's the exact stuff they're using. They all want to keep it a secret, but we ain't gonna never learn how to like grow, how to stay away from the rest. And we have the highest rates, like not even go like too deep, but we have the highest rates of high blood pressure, too Man. much salt intake. Like correct, we, uh, the highest rate of obesity in the world. So it's like as a people, like we don't take care of ourselves. We don't, like we don't. we don't. I'm gonna tell you what's so crazy, right? My coworker, like my white coworker, he came up to me. He got high blood pressure. Like he was tripping. Like he had a bad day that day because of that. Mm -hmm. Like and he's like, oh my gosh, this is bad news. I'm like, what's wrong? I have high blood pressure. I'm, I can, I can like, <laughs> I can get to see whatever you're saying. And I'm just like. Bro, that's like that's like right. everybody. Yeah, everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, but it's the, the sad part about it's like how somebody in that community can highlight something like that because they don't they're not used to that they have mm -hmm. proper eating. But now community, that's just like another day. Like that's just somebody telling you like I got a cousin or something like that. It's like, just like um like no funny people like they they don't think black people shop at Whole Foods. No, or or like if if it's not like I mean obviously you can get groceries from everywhere like I'm not saying but that you have to use but yeah. yeah they're saying that oh like um oh yeah you, it's gonna be rare that you see a black person take control but that's, of but, that's but that's what we had to be like limited to though because right. honestly we didn't have the financial capabilities they go into some of these places they they a little bit expensive but for people who got like a bigger family you got right. you very financial friendly I mean you know frugal or not. Them, them little great values, it might help them out for that time then, but you're right, we're not introduced to that Wells Fargo because we never been exposed to that. You got to think, oh, that cauliflower rice right there, okay. Man, that thing looking fire, man. The thing about the interesting thing about that is, though, like, a deeper issue is that the fact that there is so many um, impoverished black people, it's hard for you to buy healthy food, or it's sure. hard for you to be able to sustain a healthy living, like, because you got to worry about 10,000 other things yeah. on a consistent basis just for survival. For sure. And it's like, that's why, to, in my opinion, a lot of black people aren't as healthy as they could be because it's like, oh, well, how am I going to worry about my health or, my, or, or the food that I'm intaking when basically I just got to eat to, to survive? Like, yeah. I can't really worry about, oh, right. like, I have to. Well, health is well. You don't worry about your. Yeah, yeah. for sure, yeah. for sure. And, and this is like a lot of families that, like you said, that like you worry about the money. Mm -hmm. But like, think about it. All right, I'm down bad. I gotta pay the rent. I gotta pay X, Y, Z. I can go buy this healthy food with like fifteen, twenty dollars, or I can go get this cookout tray with five dollars. <laughs> for sure. For yeah, sure. Like, like, that's how like, you I got your family. You get you get twenty dollars, four meals for holding four the meals a day. day. You good that whole night? You ain't got eat none of your mouth. You get you get the, the burgers, the little nuggets, the fries. Oh, you put that sauce in there right there. Mm -hmm. But like, more of the stories. Is right here. What we call what what what's, this? It's called the it's called the wheel jig. This is the <laughs> wheel jig. Right yeah, the wheel jig. That's G. my name. My name. This is the uh, wheel jig. Uh, the wheel jig right there. Huh? You let's, let's show them that right here. On the wheel jig, okay, throw a little. What's that? What the, oh, what's man, that? What's that awesome. touch? That's Michael Greens. Michael Greens, okay. Oh, man. I ain't gonna lie, we look like we at STK. 
We at STK, man. Better, even better. Even better. Come on, man. The details of it, the details. That's crazy right there. I ain't gonna lie. Super blessing. Man. Nah, this has been great, though, for real, man. Like, really touching a lot of, like, important things as far as, like, just obviously not just being a chef, but being a human being, just chasing sure. a dream. You know what I mean? Like, you put so much effort into it. I know you're going to be successful. You know what I mean? Sure. We need you at the wedding, catering <laughs> for us. You know what I mean? I'm calling <laughs> Chef Will. Make sure things get done. Nice. You feel me? But, um, any just any, you know yeah. any last words like you want to tell the Try people? the food, I just man. I want y'all to try this. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Like, we do have to try the food. I'm sure. So, so, y'all going to have to share this, so y'all figure out how y'all want to do it. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. only going to get a small piece oh, of yeah, it back. Hey, y'all two figure it out. We gonna get okay, 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 okay. it Cause the uh, the other fish is for the owner of the house. Okay, okay. Gotcha, gotcha. Shout out, shout out, shout out my uh, tree. Uh, oh, if you need any a fork, my brother. Yeah, let me get my fork for uh one. Yeah, let me get a fork. Yeah. No, I'm about to say, Mike, y'all really for uh, knife. I meant, I meant to say a knife. That's a knife or a fork. Uh, fork. We, we get rainbow, 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 rainbow. Okay, okay. Um, I'm gonna get this down right here. I'm gonna throw the, I'm gonna throw the glove on the plate. No, I ain't. I'm not moving out. I'm not moving out. Wow, nice. Yes. Do right. we need to get it? All right. Let's cut it. Get your fork. No, I said I really just want this, this part on the end. I need to sell. Uh, I had to attack it how y'all want to attack it. Is it not off a show? Okay. Hold on. We try to make sure we say something. Talk about something. Okay. Yeah, I put the y'all three. Gotta put the broccoli right here. Okay. Yeah, between y'all three. Okay, okay, okay. Hold on, hold on, get my piece. Hold on, let me, hold on. That was a fool. Nah, that's the butt. It's definitely blessing. It's cool. Nah, it's definitely blessing. Hey. I ain't gonna lie, I got a little piece of the cream on it on accident. That shit alright. I can't even lie. <laughs> I don't even eat stuff like that, but that shit alright. Nah. For real, this hit. And you can legit ask my, you can ask my girl everything. I only eat salmon. And I can <laughs> close it out. Oh, yeah. Look, y'all. Chef Will did his thing. Meal was magnificent. You know what I'm saying? Make sure to like, subscribe, comment. Right. This Rogue Souls. Hey, you see how we doing it. We live, we in the eight. You already know, man. And the food is busting. I food is busting, man. I promise. I promise. Hey, Rogue Souls, we out. Yes, sir. Need a couple of paddock sidings and a black Bugatti. Switch a car they was close to they from Maseratis. Me and Dope, we bought the 80, call them Jeremy Shoggy. I'm a Leon Lion, all that I